Here's how to make an anime t-shirt in Adobe Photoshop, Demon Slayer Edition. Let's go. I started off by finding some images on Google and I found probably like four to five that I was semi happy with. Now, I'm not a huge anime person. I don't watch a ton of anime. I started off back in the day watching Dragon Ball Z. That's as far as I got. And I think I read some Kenshin books, but that's about it. But my brother is a huge fan of Demon Slayer, which is why I picked it. Anyway, I started off by using the magic wand tool to select the subject. If you don't know this already, Photoshop has AI built into it, so it can actually determine where the subject is. So if you click on the magic wand tool, you'll see select subject at the very top. That's all I used. And there's like a little drop down menu and you can actually choose between device or cloud. I used cloud for, you know, better selection, but um, it doesn't do a perfect job. So you'll see me kind of refining my uh, selections just to make sure that it is better. Because again, if you just rely on the select subject, it's going to let you down about 80 to 90% of the time. So um, I, I'm just going through all my images now, cutting the backgrounds out and just kind of figuring out um, where I want them to sit in my composition that I had in my brain. Um, I had this like idea of having uh, the main character really big on the front and having like kind of glimpses of him in the back in some clouds. So you'll see me kind of mess with that a little bit. But right now I'm kind of resizing the, the hero image, I'll call it. Before we continue, quick announcement from today's sponsor. Did you know what Plink now offers direct to film printing, also known as DTF for short? The common problem with DTG is that the colors look a little faded and that's where DTF comes in. This means you can get screen print quality colors with no minimums and you can print unlimited colors. This brings a new tool set to your brand so you can grow your brand even further. Simply add the Aplique app to your Shopify store or WooCommerce store to begin selling your own merch in minutes. I have everything linked below, back to the video. And then I'm gonna use select subject again to cut the background out. So I'm clicking on my magic wand tool, choosing cloud, and then clicking select subject. It's going to do a decent job. It was good enough, but I did notice the top of his hair was missing. So I ended up cutting other parts of the hair that was intact and reusing it. As you can see, I'm kind of just like positioning it. And then I even end up warping it a little bit too because um, I needed to fit the sort of curvature of the, the natural hair that's on the top already. You can see that the parts are missing obviously, right? So it needs to match. That's why I'm using warps and you know layer masks and stuff like that. So the texture blends and everything just looks cohesive and natural. Now I'm on unsplash.com and I found some clouds. So I'm gonna end up using these ones. I had some other ones, but I just didn't like the way they looked. And I think I'm just going to end up flipping them so they are mirrored. The key here is to use a soft round brush with a layer mask so the clouds blend seamlessly. Although our hero image will be taking up the majority of the center. So you don't really need to, um, you know, spend too much time on the center since it will be covered up anyway. And now I'm just using my magic wand tools to cut the edges off. I wanted that natural cloud flow and shape and I could have just went with like a soft round brush and rounded the corners, but I didn't want that boxy look which is why I'm going with this instead. And as you can see on the top, it just kind of cuts off flat line. I don't like that. I just duplicated the background and rotated it. And I think it's good to experiment. So just go with it, go with the flow. Don't stop your brain by overthinking everything. And I think that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going with it and hoping that it works out. But uh, it's almost like I'm creating a Frankenstein monster out of this background. And then I use the quick selection tool to select the top half off. And um, you can either mask it or you could just delete it. I chose to use a layer mask in case I need to add it back later on. The cool thing about having that background on its own separate layer, completely transparent, is I can use it for clipping masks. So I took my main hero image and I basically just clipped it to the background image. As you can see, I would normally just blend it with a soft round brush, but I personally liked the texture that it added to the bottom of the character, so I kept it. And now I'm placing all of my other images behind the character, basically clipped to the background layer as well. And obviously they need to be black and white too, so I'm just applying a black and white or desaturate on each image, basically taking out all the color. It doesn't matter how you do it. You can either do a black and white adjustment layer or just desaturate it if it's a raster layer like these are, or some of them. And then I'm changing the blend mode to screen so the clouds behind the characters show through. I really liked having that natural cloud texture. And I, to me, if they were just sitting on top of the clouds, it wouldn't look realistic. So the blend mode really helped with that. And I think it goes without needing to be said, but I do not own rights to these images. So I'm not actually going to print this design. I just wanted to show you guys the technique. And that's really all I care about with these tutorials is to show you guys the actual technique 
that I use every day. But yeah, moving on, um, I'm using layer masks on each image too to blend out the backgrounds into the clouds. So it's not always enough to just change the blend mode. Sometimes you actually have to brush the background out. So yeah, just use layer masks with a soft round brush and you're good to go and you guys can do this. It's just a repetitive process. That's really all it is, is the same thing over and over again. But I use the same method on pretty much all of my designs. The font that I decided to go with is one called Druk. I believe that's how you say it. Um, it's D-R-U-K. It fits the vibe, so I went with it. But uh, yeah, I would, I would experiment with different fonts. Um, there's some really good ones out there, especially for anime designs like this. So what I'm doing now is just laying out all my text, figuring out where I want it to be. And I did use Google Translator to translate all of my English to Japanese. And now I'm just grouping all of the text elements together besides the bottom text, and you'll see that in a second. But uh, I lowered the fill to 0%, which gets rid of the face color, basically the main uh, color. And then you can add an inner stroke or outer stroke at this point and it gives you that cool outline look. And the cool thing about this method is you can actually drag the text wherever you want it and it will retain those same properties. So for example, the pinkish text, if I drag it into the group, you can see that it changes and it gets the same properties, which is that zero fill uh, color overlay of black and then a stroke. You don't even need the zero fill actually on this, so I ended up getting rid of it. I played with some overlapping ideas and I decided to have Demon Slayer in the Japanese writing above the English version of Demon Slayer that's in the outline. I think it looks really nice, so I ended up sticking with this. And I did add an outer glow with black and a little bit of noise to give it that like poppy, like almost like it's popping off the page look. And then for the bottom, I just added the same stroke and everything. I, I copied the group effects over to the bottom text. To me, it was just easier to have that same aesthetic. And I liked that um, it kind of continues through the entire design, whether you're looking at the top or the bottom. I wasn't really digging the color, so I went to Google and found a Demon Slayer color palette, which that's crazy that there's even a color palette specifically for this, but I guess I can't be too shocked. But uh, I imported it and it gave me a better idea of kind of what colors I wanted to use because I wanted it to be accurate. You know, I don't, I don't want fans to look at the shirt and it's not familiar with uh, with what they're used to seeing, right? With the green tones and the, the muted reds. I want that same aesthetic. And I think that should be talked about more too because I, I don't think color is talked about enough in design, uh, specifically the merch design world. You don't hear a lot of people talking about the color theory and why you choose certain colors. So I think that's pretty important to go over. But uh, that's why I picked these colors because they resonate with the Demon Slayer fans. I took a step back and I realized my hero image, my main image in the center was not popping out enough. So what I ended up doing was basically adding an outer glow and that helped it um, kind of pop off that background image a little bit more and separate it. That way it doesn't look like it's just one large image. To finish the composition off, I just typed out the main character's name and then added that above the Japanese writing at the bottom. And I made it the same green color. I decided just to stick with the green color for the text elements um, because I like the way it looks. I, I don't know why that green is just super pleasing to me. And then right here, I decided to mess with this pattern fill, halftone pattern. And basically I changed the blend mode to either hard mix or overlay and then set a level adjustment to kind of offset the midtone range of the photo because those tones tend to get really bright when you do an overlay on the halftone. Hard mix is a whole different story. If you guys wanna learn exactly how we do this, you definitely wanna enroll in our Mastering Merch Design course at merchdesignacademy.com. We're gonna break down all of these methods in extreme detail, so you guys are gonna become pros at it in no time. If you guys are interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description below for you. To get the colors the way they are in the background, I decided to use gradient maps, and that allowed me to give a little bit more depth to them versus just being one solid color. Once I got the colors nailed down and the halftone pattern set, I found that I didn't like the background after all. I just thought it was too sharp, so I ended up finding these uh, rays on, it's kind of like a light ray, I don't know what to call it, but I found it on texturelabs.org, and I used that as a background element, so it gave it a little bit of something something, you know? It just I didn't like that it just looked so sharp and kind of uh, flat, if you will. I'm using a basic layer mask with a soft round brush to paint around the edges, and then um, if you guys didn't know this already, if you select the layer mask, you can actually apply filter gallery effects to the layer mask itself, so that's what I ended up doing here, and I just use like a grain and stamp layer. This will give us more of a gritty roll off versus just a soft round brush look. And I found that this looked a little better for the background. And then obviously I already had those gradient maps and stuff, so I turned those back on. And um, the main character, I didn't like him actually. I thought he was looking a little weird. I didn't like his skin tone, so I ended up bringing back the original colors. I made sure to have a copy of my main character at the beginning, so I kept the same color. 
and I dragged that layer above the halftone layer, as you can see on the layers palette, and changed the blend mode to multiply, and then just applied some brightness and contrast layer adjustments. That way I can bring out some of the detail, and I ended up liking the look. When you change the blend mode, sometimes the saturation can get out of control, so if you add a hue and saturation layer, you can always dial back the saturation that way. You can also use vibrance and saturation. Either way works, it doesn't matter. Here is the final design. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below, and what do you guys wanna see us teach next? Let us know, and we might pick your idea. But overall, I'm happy with the way this turned out. For it being my first anime design, I don't think I did too bad. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Charlie with Merch Design Academy. I'll catch you guys in the next one.